Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Welcome back to the vlog. Uh, gonna do more of the same. Snow is still out, but you know, it's Monday, so that means it's mail's day. Mail's day? It's mail day. I'm gonna send out Panzer and the bear. Check out my Instagram for better pictures of that. And everything behind there, including this box, which is a scrap metal heart. Check me out on UshiTap for all that stuff. Um, I got Clint coming over to check out my bathroom, so we'll do that. And then I gotta run some errands and stuff. All right, hey guys, I'm back with Clint, and we're in my bathroom, which is basically a construction zone, and we're trying to figure out exactly what we're gonna do for the shower pan. So basically what I have here is a wet room style shower. So basically the bathtub sits in the shower rather than the shower being in the bathtub. And uh, yeah, seeing if you can help me out with this project, because I don't know how to do concrete. And uh, you do. Yeah, concrete's my background, so yeah, shouldn't be a big deal. Do a slope for, floor for it and get it looking how you want. So, excellent. Should be a fun project. So, I borrowed this sprayer. Well, I borrowed both sprayers. Uh, they're both slightly different models, whatever. So I took them both from my friend and uh, business partner. Well, he was my business partner for a few years there when we were doing contracting full time. Anyways, I borrowed these. He was a painter. I was a drywaller, framer, and whatever else I could do. And uh, anyways, I borrowed these to paint my own house. So I'm gonna take those back to him, go to the mail place and a few other places. First thing on the list of errands is to check out a little client work, maybe do a quote, but this one is special. So I'm here now. Okay, so basically, we're gonna try to do something with this beam here and this beam over here to make it look more decorative and check it out. See this Bob Marley? I painted this. So. So Jennifer is a, wait, Jennifer or Jen? I don't care. Okay. Jen is a singer. Singer? Is that what you'd call it? I guess. I was going to say musician, but I don't think she plays any instruments. You're not wrong. <laughs> so she's a singer. Anyways, this was in her studio, but she's kind of redoing her, her basement here. And she's my friend with the horse. So... Maybe we'll trade some labor for some horse riding lessons or whatever you would call that. Uh, if you watch my story on my Instagram, if you follow me over there, then you already know about her. Or a vlog from way back when I walked past her driveway that one time. But we're getting close to learning how to ride a horse, so I'm pretty stoked. Okay, so we had a look at the beam and stuff, and we have some ideas, and we may not be able to do exactly what uh, she had planned, but uh, we'll figure it out. But check it out. Oh no, now he's walking away. What's this horse's name? I don't know. You don't know his name? This one isn't yours. No. Hey bud. This is not the one I'm gonna be riding, but the one I'm gonna be riding is way over there. And check it out, they got one of these little guys. He's got like a Beatles haircut. What's this one's name? I don't know. You don't know this one's either? Hey, come here buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. He's so tiny. He's hilarious. Okay, let's say hi to your horse. What's your horse's name? Mister. Okay, at least you know his name. <laughs> okay, so this is Mister, and he's the one that I'm going to ride one day. Is he nervous or something? Is it because of me? Am I putting off a bad vibe? No. Oh, he doesn't want to do anything? He's lazy? Lazy right now over the winter? So this is the guy. They're just gonna ride him a few times before I get on him because he hasn't been ridden all winter, but I'm pretty stoked. Check this out, he's warming up. He's coming close. This is the closest I've ever been to a horse. I rode a camel one time though, at a zoo. I tried to get this plumber at the house I was working on to, uh, his name is Jaden. I mm -hmm. tried to get him to let me ride his horse, but he just wouldn't, he just wouldn't let me. He said, 
he was like, yeah, let's do it. And then he didn't know I was serious. <laughs> this is so cool. Do you cut his bangs like that? I actually don't know why his bangs are so straight across. Grabbing some concrete bags for the shower pan now. Getting them from Rona. This is the best place to mail artwork because they pack it up for you nice and secure and then ship it out to you using the best method. Whichever courier or post office service is the uh, best cost effective and fastest and safest for what you're trying to ship. So now that I'm done here at the pack mail, I'm going to go meet my old business partner there, give him back his sprayers, and uh, see what other trouble I can get up to today. Also, I gotta say, the smell in here is gross. I stepped in horse crap, obviously, earlier, and it's starting, starting to smell. But, uh, I mean, you can't exactly step in a horse pen without stepping in horse crap. May as well do some things in order. I got a call to go pick up some stuff from uh, a lady that I've gotten some stuff from before. And so is Alex, actually. So, you know, may as well do that. And then I'll meet up with uh, Johnny B. Johnny B, my partner there, my, my uh, business partner from uh, a couple years ago. Okay, now I'm at a lady's house here that Alex got me in touch with. Uh, he got some stuff here. And uh, you may recognize the uh, the garage here, but uh, it's uh, basically a bunch of stuff she's trying to get rid of. So I'm going to see what it's all about. Uh, I actually got a couple things from her last week, a table saw and a, and a radial arm saw. So that was pretty cool. And a bunch of other stuff. If you follow my Instagram, then you would have seen that on Instagram, but on the, in the story. But there's a few more things. Okay, so this is... This is the haul. Just a bunch of random stuff. Some stuff I can use like those, just, you know, as tools. And then some stuff I can turn into art. And some stuff I will probably trade or sell or whatever. I don't know. Kicking it old school, meeting up classic, in parking lot. Classic, classic. Am I allowed to talk? Classic and classy. you can talk. This is Johnny B. He's, uh, he's my, uh, my good friend. We met by, uh, well, actually, you contacted me. Facts. Trying to get a, uh, drywaller. Yeah, you know, a drywaller and taper. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and then uh, that's how we met. But yeah. uh, you lent me a couple of your machines to do my own house. You weren't able to do it because you were out in Toronto making. Finishing my degree. And I also jumped, too. So. <laughs> 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 People are not going to know what that means, jump. What do yeah, you do? What is track it? and field, I do long jump. Uh, I'm getting pretty good now, finally. After how many years. Finally. <laughs> he can jump so far. I, we, we did this one job, actually not too far from here, and I was trying to jump from uh, this one sidewalk to like the this thing. You had to be there. So I jump like maybe like five feet tops, and then this guy, he's like, oh, I'm not really warmed up. I don't really know. I don't know really how. He jumped like 12 feet. <laughs> like not literally. Oh, well, maybe literally. How far? Know. How far can you jump? 25. What? <laughs> okay, I didn't know that. Really? Yeah. 25 feet. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so maybe he did jump 12 feet. I don't know. It was so far. I was. <laughs> I jumped like not far out. Anyways, it's good to see you again, man. Yes, sir. It's, it's been a while. Long. Been yeah, a while. All right, let's get this done and let's chill for a bit. Yeah, sounds good. All right, I haven't seen that guy in like, I don't know, a long time, months anyways. Good catching up with him after, after so long. All right, time to head home. Try to get some stuff done at home. All the snow is melted here in the city. I hope it melts by my house pretty soon. But I have some more art I need to do, so I'll get working on that. 
while I have some time. Next morning and we're getting started doing some, uh, I don't know, whatever he's doing. And uh, basically just figuring out how we're gonna do the couple layers. So it's gonna be concrete, then our water barrier, and then more concrete to finish niceness. That's gonna be what you actually see when you step into the shower. All right, Clint, what are we doing exactly here? Uh, so I've, I've measured off the ceiling and kind of established our height here, giving us about a quarter inch per four foot of uh, slope uh, down to the drain. And of course, this isn't our finished product. This is just our first one establishing the, the slope. And then you're going to put on your membrane and then we'll do the final coat, which is in this case isn't going to be tile that's going to be a finished product right we're yeah gonna... so the top layer of concrete so yeah we're going to go concrete the membrane is just so all the water that seeps through the right. top layer runs to the drain and then yeah the top i want it to be a finished like acid stain or something yeah like something like that i think it would look good yeah and so the bathtub is going to go here on this little wood base that i made a while ago and then shower of course is is in that section there cool I think this is gonna look awesome. Yeah, it's gonna look good. You got it all smoothed out, good enough for my membrane. Yeah. Uh, and we have the little, whatever that's called. A little bucket or whatever, just so that you can do your uh, membrane down in, right? You want to bring it down towards the drain and seal it all up, right? Right, so then, yeah, the water, any water that gets through the concrete will just, and then go down into the drain. That's so that, how the drain is designed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so okay. this this will pull out that little bucket and then We'll pour the next layer over the membrane up. We'll set the height of the drain and that'll pour right to the height of the drain and finish product. Excellent. Well, I'm pretty excited. It looks way better than for sure what I had done as my little base layer there. So once it's taken out. Yeah, then we'll just bring that up to height. Okay, I see. So and you can bring your membrane right down onto the plastic on the, on the drain. Okay. And we'll bring this up as high as we need to, till the, just till the threads grab. And then the final product will go from there, sloping up to wherever. So where we'll we put our next, okay. Do another half inch or an inch. So this took, would we use uh, 10, almost 12 bags, right? 12 bags or so? Yeah, so we'll probably use maybe close to that again, bring this up about an inch finished product here. Excellent, and when do you think we can, or I can do the membrane? Should be able to go on it tomorrow, it'll be hard enough. Excellent. Okay, did the shower pan thing. That's step one. Got to, tomorrow I'm gonna put the membrane in and stuff. And then step three is to do it again. Now, I'm just looking up some, what the heck's up with my hair? Looking up some inspiration for the beams that I'm gonna do over at Jen's house. They're not gonna be like this beam. Hers are ply beams, so there's very little that you can do uh, to make them look nice without covering them. But I'm going to look up some uh, barn beams and stuff and see if I can kind of show her what I think would look good. So going on the Google machine I have here to, uh, to look at some pictures. All right, so I'm probably going to go see her tomorrow and show her some of my ideas. And then uh, maybe we'll start on it, do some demo, or maybe she already did the demo. For now, I'm back in the studio working on something... I can't show you. It's All right. Well, got some good progress done on that piece. And now, probably gonna go take the hound for a walk and uh, keep my head down to the ground. Maybe I might be able to find some bits and pieces I can use in an art project. So walking down, all this water that, that 
was formed because of the melting snow, went underneath the road and out. We have no flooding in our driveway except for in, you know, random little puddle holes, little potholes. I'm pretty stoked that that all worked. There's a fox right there. And Hank is right here. I have a feeling he's going to pull when he sees that fox go across the road. Sorry, he's not paying any attention. I don't know if you guys can see it. There he goes. Oh, you know what? It's a cat. <laughs> it was an orange cat. <laughs> I thought it was a fox. It looked like a fox, but it's not. It was definitely a house cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hank, Hank would have chased him too if he was paying attention. Dang it. I was like, there's a fox. Gotta get out my phone. Freaking cat. So far my walk has been basically a bust. I always try to find stuff that I can use, but I haven't found anything this walk. But this rock will suit my culvert just fine. So that's going in the pocket for safekeeping. So I was lucky enough to find two rocks on my walk. It's not much, but it'll do something. I mean, I'm gonna have to take those out when I dig out the rest of that hole, but that's where I'm keeping them. Anyways, I think I'm gonna go back into the studio for that secret project, and then uh, we'll see what we get up to tomorrow. I don't know. No matter what, seems like every morning we're getting more snow. I mean, it's, I mean, it's melting, but still, this is getting frustrating. So I'm in the shower pan here. I'm going to put this membrane that I have on everything, uh, including the floor, so that we can put another layer on top. And uh, so I got uh, some uh, fiber cloth to put in the cracks around the edge. All along the edges there gets a bit of fiber cloth so that I don't get water seepage into there. It's gonna be covered in the membrane. And then uh, once that dries, then I coat everything, including the walls, and then when that dries, I'm gonna do it again a few times. I'm using Red Guard, and it says it only needs two coats, but I'm probably gonna put in five or something and uh, see how that goes. Look how pink this is. So it's pink, and it'll turn red when it's cured. But I have everything kind of cleaned up along the edges. I'm gonna start applying that with a brush, then putting in my, uh, it's a Schluter product, but it's basically a fiber cloth and it's just for reinforcement and grrr, I don't really know what I'm talking about. This is just what I know has to be done. It is very goopy and it's also good for filling, apparently filling the uh, hairline cracks. You're supposed to pre-fill the hairline cracks. So yeah, I'm not sure how much you're supposed to put on, but as long as it's holding the fiber cloth in the end, then I'm good with it. look pink but red when it dries it turns red so I can see that over here it's already turning a little red I don't know if it's easy to see that on camera but if you look in the corner here it's turning red so it's already setting up it sets up quick so I'm gonna let all this dry all around the perimeter and then come back and then coat everything including the walls over top of all that with a roller well all that is curing or whatever it's called. Heading back to Jennifer's house, the girl with the horse, and I'm gonna show her what I came up with for her bean, and then we'll see, uh, we'll see when we can get started on that. Okay, we've come up with a plan. We're gonna take this off to see what we're looking at. I was hoping to put another lamination on each side, except for it won't really make sense here and look real at the same time. Over here on this side, we're going to wait until uh, there's a plan with the rest of the ceiling. It may be drywalled or drop ceiling. Not sure. So we're not going to worry about that beam. But this beam, just for uh, to make it look good, we're going to see. We're going to take off all the beadboard there and uh, 
the casings around it and see what we are working with and perhaps we can come up with something cool. All right, so we started doing a little demoing here. We see that it's a four ply beam, which is fine. And then uh, the texture from the, the texture ceiling is splattered all over it. They put the bead board over top and then drywall on the bottom. So we're gonna take the rest of this off and then, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna do like a, uh, a forged look with uh, metal straps that go around. It's gonna look like it goes around it, sort of thing. Ply beams are not pretty almost ever, so adding a little hardware I think goes a long way. So, all right, we're gonna demo the rest of this. Watch the pool table. Okay, it's all demoed. Uh, it's basically just a regular four ply beam that uh, was covered up. You normally would cover these up. They don't really look that good, but we're gonna try our best to make it look aesthetically pleasing. We might stain it, but basically the main part the, the, that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my friend's forge when I, when I have access to it. It's obviously up to him, and I'm gonna fashion some brackets that are, are gonna go around it. Now this one is cracked here, this ply, but it shouldn't make a difference. It's still been holding up the house for 50 years, so it's fine. Uh, when I'm going to fasten the, the bracket or the band onto the uh, beam with is actually a very shallow bolt. It's gonna look like it goes all the way through, but it's gonna barely screw into it. It's just basically to hold it, which will not affect the structural integrity of the beam. It's unfortunate that it's cracked, but that does happen. It's pretty common uh, when you're using SPF lumber. So all of this is basically just texture when it was sprayed a long time ago. All these nails are gonna come out. All the screws are gonna come out. It's gonna look really good once it's done here. You kinda of have to use your imagination but that's basically my job is to use my imagination. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty stoked about this. Are you stoked about it? I'm really stoked about it. Excellent. Anyways, I'm gonna take off now. I'm gonna try to get access to the forge as soon as I can so I can start making these brackets. I'm pretty excited about getting back uh, working with the forge. I'm not a blacksmith, but you know, I like I like learning. So off off to go make some calls now. It's red! Time for a second coat. So in the second coat, we put in these little corner things, one in each corner, and then coat that all splattery, splishy, sploppity like I did these, and then go over the whole thing at the same time. Well, having another look outside, taking a break from doing the shower, I don't know if you can see, if you look close though, it's snowing again. Look, everything melted and now it's snowing again. But being inside has made me, you know, look out the window and see this. So we're actually uh, online right now looking at some windows. Uh, so these windows open, but they don't shut unless you push on the outside. So we're thinking about getting black windows and stuff. They're a little expensive. So we probably have to uh, save up for them. But seeing the black windows is uh, giving us some inspiration of what we're going to do for the trim. So I have a couple ideas and that will be in a future build uh, video. For now, I just look outside. Oh, that's screen. <laughs> I look outside and see the flakes falling and I'm bummed. Good thing I have inside work to do for now. So I wake up. Look out the window and it's sunny. So that's really good news. It's sunny and no snow falling. I mean, there's still snow on the ground, but you know, it is what it is. So on the agenda today, I'm gonna put another membrane on the, uh, another layer of membrane on the shower. I got the plumber coming to hook up my dishwasher and to change the plumbing here in this little nook where my vanity is going to go. I'm doing something a little different with my vanity and some of the plumbing is going to be exposed. So I'm going to have copper down there. Uh, stay tuned for that. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do, although I, I mostly am. I'm going to put another layer on here and then uh, 
I don't know. There's probably something else on the agenda. Probably go do something in the studio or something. That's kind of a secret project, but there will be a video on that. So uh, look forward to that. So everything is pink, soon to be red. This is the first, second, and third code on there. here with Rory from uh, Dr. Dr. Mechanical. Dr. Mechanical. He's my plumber. I actually uh, had a buddy who was a plumber and he's like, you got to call this guy. So I've had him do all the plumbing in my house and I've kept changing my mind on what I wanted to do because I'm making things a little, uh, I guess you could say, yeah, different. different. Artistic. So I got him to change, started to change that, doing the, uh, the dishwasher and stuff and then also let's uh follow me outside i gotta ask you about running plumbing to my shop so everyone who follows me here basically knows that uh, i'm doing all this work outside although it started snowing so that i could start doing the work in the shop so what do you think if we uh come out of the house and to the shop do you think that's possible it's definitely possible uh so what do I need to do? Just Most dig a trench? Cost efficient way would be to probably put some sort of catch basin in or beside your crash. Rather okay. than dig a trench eight feet deep. Rather than dig a trench. Okay. Cool. And you can do that for me, hey? Yep. Awesome. So I was also thinking about putting a boiler heating system in the shop. Can you help me with that? I can definitely help you with that too. Alright. He did like my hot water tank and all that stuff. I've spent so much money <laughs> trying to get this house up and going again. I really appreciate all your work. Uh, if someone in the Edmonton area wants to hire you, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, you can go to my uh, website, search us on Google, uh, Dr. Mechanical, drmechanical.com. Uh, you also have an Instagram, right? Yeah, I have an Instagram. It's uh, drmechanical. Yeah, and uh, our phone number is 587-589-6233. Awesome. Are you sure you want that on the internet? I do. Okay. All right. Awesome. It's already there. I really appreciate your work, man. Thanks for having me. All right. Now I'm I'm actually on my way to go get what I'm going to use as the vanity. Uh, hopefully it fits in there. See, it's a, it's a pre-made item. Kind of a historic item, if you will. So I'm going to go do that while the plumbers are doing their thing see if it fits and whatnot. I still have to do the tile backsplash and stuff uh, before I put this in because uh, there's, you can see underneath it. You'll, you'll understand when you see it uh, in an upcoming vlog. I kind of don't want to give it away just yet, just in case it actually doesn't work out and then I'll feel stupid. <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm gonna head out to get that and then come back and do some more uh, uh, coats on the, on the shower there. Semi lost its load yesterday. This was all over the news. So I'm at the orange store. I'm gonna get some tile. I just came from getting the vanity, or what I'm gonna use for a vanity. Hopefully it works. Uh, I'm trying to get this bathroom done so Rory can uh, come do the finishing plumbing. It's kind of cool when uh, when you make friends with contractors. Kind of, it's good for learning and stuff. I like to learn as much as I can about different things. I'm not a plumber and I'm not gonna pretend to be a plumber, but to have a, to have that resource, someone willing to like show you what's going on without it being like an awkward thing because I'm the homeowner and he's the guy who I hired sort of thing. He's a really cool guy. I actually know him from my buddy who used to work for him, who is also a plumber and uh, kind of lives too far away for it to make sense for him to come do my to do my uh, project here um, I see we have this subway tile here I'm gonna go with a subway tile this has bevels on it so probably not gonna go with this I want a more classic look more classic uh, styled uh, subway tile there's this right here we got square but we got this it's a little too big. We have this. Smaller, but 
still too big. They should have, I can see up here, they have what I was looking for. Oh, right here. I probably looked at this like seven times. It's kind of awkward, but anyways, uh, tomorrow is going to be the last day of the concrete, or the second, the second layer of concrete over the red guard. I thought that was going to happen today. Um, but Clint's coming tomorrow to finish that up because I'm a little behind with the red guard stuff. So, uh, tomorrow, if it makes sense and Clint wants, I'm going to see if he'll help me, uh, lay some tile. Uh, this is going to go on the wall behind the vanity and in the shower. And, uh, I might do black grout sort of thing. I don't know. I'm going for, a uh, a look in my head that looks cool hopefully it, it translates to real life but uh, I think I'm gonna go with these they're only 34 cents each so that's good uh, yeah I'm gonna try to finish up this bathroom so Rory can get in there and do his finishing work and uh, then I can actually use that bathroom <laughs> tons of tile some more under there in here, sneak peek of the vanity. Time for me to head home. Dead last, dead last. Well, once again, <laughs> we have snow falling. It's a good thing that we're doing this inside where snow doesn't matter. So I'm just waiting for Clint to get here. It's pretty early still. Uh, but he should be here maybe in about half an hour or so and we can get this concreted and then we can talk about doing tile and stuff on the floor here we're not doing tile it's just gonna be a finished uh, concrete acid stain sort of deal and then uh, wall subway tile and subway tile I'm pretty excited to get this going on the floor we're gonna do a hexagon tile. I know that's pretty popular now. So a lot of people advise you not to do what's popular now. But the thing about what I like in my house is I've always liked it. Like those hexagon tiles are kind of a vintage sort of thing. And now all this vintage stuff and rustic stuff and industrial look stuff is coming in to the now. And that's just perfect for me because it's easier to get it. Uh, before, it would have been hard for me to get it. Uh, th certain things that I couldn't make, but now that it's I can just go to the store and get it. It's great I'm still gonna try to make as much as I can But the point is that the style that I like I actually like meshing a few styles as you probably have gathered uh, but I, It's in right now I've always liked the style and it's in right now makes it easy. I will always like that style I will always like the colors that I that I've picked. I will always like the rusticness. I will always like the industrial because I always have. I like the look of utilitarian type uh, aesthetic. Anyways, let's get to work. <laughs> to be a thing that we can do. Right now, we're gonna start 
prepping or doing whatever we need to do, we have to take the lino out and uh, figure out how we're gonna do the tile on the back wall here. Uh, so we're doing, uh, what would you call it? Subway tile on the, on the wall, and then on the bottom we're doing a hexagon type tile. This lino has to come up, so he's, uh, he's got a process that he uses that we're going to employ with a heat gun and stuff. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. I mean, that's what I'm interrupting what he's doing. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, then, uh, and then we can tile this back wall and I can put the vanity in. And then when this concrete's done, we can do all this tile in here. So I'm pretty... Did you already show off your vanity? No, I'm keeping that a secret for the next for the next okay. for the next video. Uh, it's uh, it's a cool vanity. I hope I hope it works. Just gotta figure out how we're gonna put a sink. What kind of sink? Yeah, yeah something that will match. On top, it'll look pretty cool. Yeah, it, I think it's it will. Looking. I think it will. So for the first one, I'll just load up the tile. Okay. Instead. And what's the reason to do it this way? Just so it doesn't make as big a mess right now. Like I'll load up the wall once we get going, but for the first couple, I'll just get these. Guys. So for the bottom row, you kind of do that, or yeah, it's not not necessary to do it that way. It's just the way I like to do it. Sometimes. Just the way you do it. Okay. Just a little cleaner sometimes. Okay. So we got the lino cut away just here, where we're gonna do the tile right away. I see he's got some spacers down there. That's probably a good idea. I probably would have been like, hmm, let's just put this right against the floor. Well, it gives us the option if the floor is out a little bit, then we can shim it or move it up and down or whatever, right? Okay. So, and then, so I'll do this whole roll quick here and then we'll stick a level on it or a straight edge and then we'll make sure it's nice and straight and level. And okay. And then, and then we have like this, the center line right there so that we have a nice, uh, I guess center line, obviously. Yeah, we're brick, bricking these, right? So they'll be staggered, so it'll be nice with the, the um, center line there to... Right, makes sense. The next one will start like that, right? Right, That's okay. Cool. cool, cool. The only time I've done tile is being a helper, so once again, that's what I'm doing. So I, I know a little bit, but... You'll, you'll know enough how to do this in a few minutes. Yeah. Simple. I I know how to do it, but I don't. I'm not confident enough to be able to do it perfect. I would never do this for a client unless they were comfortable with having someone who didn't know what they were doing. You know, I know a little bit, but I mean, I'm always trying to learn more. I would think with your skill set after doing it once or twice that you'd be fine to do it for a client. We're not level, so we have to move all those tiles up slightly. Yeah. Makes sense, I guess. It does not surprise me that in this house, stuff is not level. But uh, that is typical of uh, rough framing anyways, in uh, yeah. certain applications anyways. So since the floor is unlevel, we are going to, well, we, I just keep saying we. I'm going to watch him take it all off. He's going to start the second row first, uh, which is what he told me he was that he should do in the beginning. And I was like, ah, should be fine. Well, it's, it, it might not be how other tiles. I do a lot of renos and stuff. I mean, we've been doing this for 35 years, doing concrete and framing and renos, all sorts of stuff. So tiling isn't my main forte. I've done a lot of it. So a guy that just does tile work might do it a different way. I like to do this. But this works. This works. I like to do the second course first because then we can do a, a level line. I can put some nails in and then you're not really fooling around. You can just start your course, get a few rolls up and then you can come back and finish that bottom and you're not fooling around as much with it, right? Makes sense to me. Just easier for me. Yeah, okay. No, that makes sense. So I'm going to do the second row first and then we'll cut the tiles if they need to be cut for the bottom. Uh, what well, I don't know. I don't know. To me, it doesn't matter. This part is gonna be barely shown. The uh, the vanity is a bit of a a floating vanity, if you will. It's not, but it is. It's kind of hard to explain without being able to see it. But the tile is gonna show underneath, so I want the tile to go from ceiling or floor to ceiling. And uh, yeah, so I should have let him just do what he said he was gonna do. 
But I was like, ah, should be fine. Should be fine. We'll get her figured out. In these old houses, the floors are so up and down, right? So Yeah. Well, in a lot of new houses, floors are up and down. Yeah, in anything made in uh, 2019 and before, you'll find some inconsistencies. <laughs> <laughs> So we got a ledger board there, which is gonna make us level now. Now we're level. Now, now we're level. level. Excellent. So now we can go at it. Then you're gonna lay the tile above that. Nice. Go up from there. Once that's done, the tile can't slide down because it's gonna be resting on the board. And then, and then we can do the bottom line after. Correct. Yes. Correct. Excellent. <laughs> Took a little break. Clinton had to go uh, get a, do something with his son. You may have seen him just a little bit earlier, kind of peeking through in the video there. Uh, so I'm kind of just giving this a go. Now I've done this before, so I kind of get the principle. The thing that I wanted Clint for is just the, just someone who actually knows what he's doing, I guess. And he's the type of person who would say, you know, well, he did say that he's not, you know, a professional tile layer, although he's been doing it for 30 years. So, I mean, you know, there's other things, but I've been doing it for probably a total of four jobs I've done tile on. And uh, when it comes to doing my uh, client work, I will often tell them that I don't really do this or that if I don't know how to do it, but sometimes they insist because they just like my other work that I've done or something. In their life. So I have done tile here and there, but not not too much. I'm always willing to learn, though. And uh, in these type of situations, this is my own house, so it doesn't matter if I screw up because I can do it myself. Like there's real tile, let's say let's say professional, good professional tile layers. Probably don't use these little plus sign things. They just do it by eye. Unless maybe maybe on the bottom they, they do. And uh, and uh, maybe if they just feel like it, maybe they maybe they would. But for me, I'm just kind of I'm just kind of doing what I've been shown. And I've been shown this method by another guy who actually does do tile for a living. When I gave him a hand, so every once in a while. Uh, I will I will do a job with someone who actually does it as a helper so that I can kind of learn more stuff, add it to my repertoire, if you will. And so far, it hasn't steered me wrong. I really enjoy doing these types of uh, jobs. I mean, I prefer to paint pictures, and you probably gather that based off of what I've been doing, but... This is also good. Yeah, so I'm just gonna keep doing this until Clint comes back. He had a dentist appointment and he's dropping off his son or, or whatever there. So he's gonna finish up the concrete pan and I'm gonna try to get as much of this done as I possibly can. And then we're going to tile shower which will be a little more I think uh, intensive I'll need a hand a little more uh, to do that but this is gearing up for me to do something in the kitchen and then in my downstairs bathroom which will be done at a later date so look forward to that also for continuity sake you probably I should probably mention that I got a haircut and you'll be like what he just he was just here with longer hair. Yeah, I just got a haircut when we took a break, when Clint had to go. So, yeah, that's why I have my hair short randomly. <laughs> Haircuts aside, everyone, thank you so much for checking out my vlog. Stay tuned for the next one. We got we got the, the Jen's beam to take care of. We have the vanity that's going in. We have the tile. We have the shower pan. We have... Uh, all sorts of things that still need to be done. I appreciate you guys following me around. Uh, basically, I'm just doing what I would do 
and I would share the stuff on Instagram, which you can still see. Follow me over there at Ushita and at My Hands Gallery. Uh, the stuff will be in the description. Uh, I just decided that I would start doing uh, it on YouTube as well at the advice of Alex, which you guys know Alex, Curiosity Inc. So uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for hanging around. I appreciate it and I uh, will see you in the next one.